All right, the um, next thing we're going to work on is we're going to work on the metal framing around the chest. And with this, um, we're going to play with a little bit of, I'm going to show you some different tips and tricks to, to do this. Um, if you've noticed in the previous things, you always want to deal with highlights, your base color, your highlights, and your shadows, and then work on your textures. And then you, you're, you're pretty much laying this this up for that aspect, all right? So for this particular thing, um, I'm going to, um, you know, this, this gray is fine for base color. I just want to go a little bit darker. So I'm going to go to image adjustments. And I'm going to go to hue and saturation. And I'm just going to bring, bring this down a little bit, OK? And that's going to give me a dark base to work off. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my highlights. Well, we're gonna. I'm gonna only work on the upper chest here first, and for that that purpose, I'm gonna. We're just gonna um, create the upper part of this chest, and um, from there we'll work on uh, the other stuff. So, with this, um, the first thing that you always want to do is once you've got your dark in there or your your base color in there, we're just going to pick this and I'm going to go into brush def uh, take off dynamic shading and I'm going to just do a light transfer lower my spacing so it's a little bit smoother and then we're just going to change the size all the way down now if you're looking at this um, sometimes you know after you've worked on this a while you kind of kind of get confused what you're doing and where you're going with so for this this thing, I'm just going to work on this particular piece right here, um, which is it looks like the bottom half. And you can always the nice thing about this is you can always you know just draw a little bit of a line, and then actually let's undo that. Let's create a new layer down here, and then draw a bit of a line. So that way, um, once we save it, we can we can go to 3D Studio Max, which I have open here, and you can kind of search for where this particular piece um, is having its, its uh, where I made the marker. Now, did I save it? That's the question. Yes, I saved it. Um, and let's look back at the chest. So we're looking at the chest. And if you can see right there's there's the uh, the base I have for my chest. So this is is pretty much the upper part of the chest. The only piece that doesn't um, look like it's in there is this piece right here. And you can always go in the editor, and my editor popping up over here. And if you look, the editor is this piece right here. So these these two bottom pieces are what we are going to work on. Okay. So I'm just going to real quickly go here, and I'm going to choose the eraser tool, and I'm just going to erase the, the thing that I did. OK, so knowing that this is the bottom of the chest, and this is the, the top of the chest, what we can uh, start doing is one of the things that I, I like doing is just defining my shadows and highlights. So I'm going to just uh, bring this up a little bit. And what we're going to do is literally just, I'm going to hold the shift key down and just kind of. Now, I'm because I'm working on the base layer, notice that my I can paint here all I want. And it's not going to paint because my other layers are above that. So I'm not too worried about the metal right now. So we're just kind of going in there and I'm just going to. Add some shadows here real quick. And you gotta watch when you press the shift because shift will also work if you hold shift, make a spot, and then draw to make another spot. It will actually it will actually draw that in there. So all I'm doing is just kind of you know building in this. And it doesn't have to be perfect now because all we're doing is just playing around here. Okay. Um but that gives you the idea. Now you always can choose the eraser and hold shift down and kind of let's see let's go back into this. 
and we can always just kind of go in and erase these bits and pieces that have overlapped. Okay, the next thing that you want to pay attention to is, I'm going to just swap my color here, um, the next thing that you want to pay attention to is edges. Edges tend to get more wear and tear, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, I'm going to go a little bit smaller, and I'm using the brackets here to uh, to lower my brush size, and then I'm just going to go to you know like 40 percent, and then all I'm going to do is hold in shift, and you can just kind of drag these. Let's see if you hold shift in. So some of this we're just going to have to paint in there. See, like so, and I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm just highlighting the edges so that when you look at at uh, corners here, they're not going to be these sharp corners. They're going to have a little bit of a highlight on them. And it doesn't have to be anything spectacular, just, you know, just going through, you know, and, and this is one of the things that you have to realize is right now I'm only putting in a matter of you know 20 minutes per section and if you want to get good with this um, you know you're spending hours <coughs> excuse me you're spending hours and hours on a particular uh, part from a texture I mean some textures come easier than others and some some don't so it's just really a, a, a point of aspect of how much time do you want to spend on it now, like I said, I'm not, you know, not going to spend a ton of time on these because these are more to get you to learn how to. These are more to get you to learn on how to use the function of the tools. They're, uh, you know, and as you work more and more with them, you're going to understand. Hey, I got to do this, or hey, you know, this this is going to. Uh, you know, help if I do this and, and so on and so forth. You know, and, and that's the, the key point is learning to make your tools work for you. Um, you know, and th these are just some of the techniques that I'm teaching here. Um, so now that I've got these, these basics in there, okay, um, you know, you can always test your basics and you see where you've got them, where you don't. So, like, so here I kind of missed. So I'm just kind of going to kind of go up here and you know, nothing, nothing fancy, just just putting in my basics. Okay, so now that that I've got those in there, um, you know, I've got the highlights and, and that. Now I can start adding detail, and detail would be something like this. Um, so say we're going to just add these little bolts all over. So what I'm going to do for a little bolt is something. Uh, I've created a new layer, and um, I'm just going to create a circle. Now, if you hold in uh, shift, <coughs> excuse me, shift for the circle, you know, it doesn't matter where it is, but um, if you hold in shift for the circle, what you're going to get is literally uh, just a perfect circle. Now, with that, I can go in, and I'm just going to go gradient here, and I've got black to white. I'm going to click on this gradient, and instead of pure white, I'm going to actually, no, I like this. So I'm going to create a new color here, and I'm going to choose a mid-tone black, and then I'm going to move this over here like so. I'm going to click on this one, and I'm going to move that over here like so. So what I'm doing, let's say OK. So now what I'm doing is I'm choosing the radial, and I just drag out, and I've got kind of this already built um, sphere. Now this particular one is, is just a little bit too bright so I might want to go in and dumb down the gray a little bit here and try that again you know so something like this or you can do it off to the side and that's going to give you a little bit of a shadow um, type of thing. Now this is this is way partic uh, particularly too light for me so what I'm going to do is go to my adjustments, and I'm going to go to hue and saturation, and raise this up so you can see it. I'm just going to lower that a little bit, 
um, you know, saturation doesn't matter, and say OK. So now once you've got this, um, you've pretty much got a, a base for everything else you've got. So all you have to do is go to your um, edit transform, free transform, control T, and I'm going to hold in uh, control shift and that'll just scale it down really small. And then I'm going to just move it over here and I'm going to hit enter. Okay, I'm going to deselect control D. So now I've got this this um, little sphere um, that I'm going to use for a rivet in this particular one. Um, now, so what you want to do is you want to pay attention to the rivets and you want to go in. And now I'm going to hold in, I'm going to go back to my brush tool. I'm going to hold in, uh, actually, let's get this. We're going to go to Move, Auto Select. And I'm going to hold in my tool here. I'm going to hold in Alt, and Alt will uh, give you a clone option. So then I'm going to just do that, and you can hold Shift down. And all I'm going to do is drop these all over the place. You know, and they may not seem like much now. So, and then you can just, again, you know, I, this is just you taking the time to, you know, add the, these, these little rivets in there, and so on and so forth. So these... You know, they don't have to be perfect because this is man-made. And I'm just kind of holding in control. And make sure you release it because otherwise you just keep dragging it. And that's what I'm doing. Like so. And if you notice, every time I do this, it makes a copied layer. So I'm just kind of going over here. And again going back and forth and again it doesn't have to be super perfect because right now I've got you know a lot of layers and so on and so forth but you get the point um, you know I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time doing this um, but once you get done with this um, I'm going to just drag one off to the side here and I'm going to just lock that so I can't do anything with that layer. But now I'm going to just go back. And if you hit Control E, notice it's collapsing the layers over here. And it's changing my layer shape. Because I have you know 40 layers just in these little things. So all I'm doing is holding or hitting Control E one by one. And it's flattening that layer onto the next layer. Now because I don't have any effects, this will carry over like so. Alright, so that's my layer, my 18 layers. Now of course I can go back in and, and redo this. Now I've got my highlights and I should really label these because that's really just good. Um, so this is your highlight high and shadow of the metal. And then this one above it is um, rivets. And then this one is lower is base metal. So, and, and what you're doing now is create another layer under the rivets. And you can just grab in your brush. And I'm going to just go a little bit bigger. What you can do is, oops, I'll do that. Control, uh, Control Alt Z was a historical undo, and then X flips it back and forth. So now you can go in there and just add in these shadows for the rivets. And it doesn't have to be anything, you know, spectacular. All you're doing is you're putting this in there just to, you know, give the illusion that there's a 3D shape there. You know, and I could, that's so. There you go. So now that you've got these these rivets on there, um, you know, you really you 
you really want to define after this you really want to define and put in some texture okay um, and texture can be done in another layer um, what I like doing is for this particular one I'm just going to drag this up and we're just going to go underneath the base layer and then all I'm going to do is I've got black and white here I'm going to go one of the very few times that I use filters is I go to render and then I go to clouds okay now with clouds it gives you this this rendered pattern and it doesn't look like much you know it's, it looks like you're in a, in a hazy fog um, but when you put it as a multiply you know it changes the slight layer of your texture now you can do this with any pictures or anything like that you, you bring in there um, and and so on so you can do all this stuff. But what I'm going to do with this layer, I'm going to go to Image Adjustments, and I'm going to go to Brightness Contrast. And I'm actually going to see if I move my contrast up. I'm going to just say Use Legacy because I always... So if I move my contrast up, it's going to go more black and white. However, if I go lower, it's going to change that pattern. So I'm going to say OK. And then I think I'm running out of memory here, so I'm going to stop this real quick. Um, and then I can, you know, move this over the rivets if I want, and that gives me, you know, a little texture in there. Um, so I'm going to stop this now, and I'll do the next one in a few minutes.